So now we've got a whole chapter on what are called the conjugated pi systems. So when a conjugated pi system occurs when you've got a single sigma bond in between sets of pi, uh, pi electrons in this case, and it turns out you'll get an entire parallel set of p orbitals in the process. Uh, now it turns out we can't treat them as just being separated uh, in space. They're going to be related to each other in a certain way as we'll see later on. Uh, but if you've got more than one sigma bond in between your sets of pi electrons, we actually just treat those as two totally different pi systems, and we say they are isolated. Uh, finally, if we've got pi electrons not separated by any sigma bonds here in this case, uh, we call these cumulated, and it turns out these will be using different sets of p orbitals that are not parallel in any way, shape, or form. So if we look here, if I'm using, say, these p orbitals in this case, uh, then to make this adjacent bond, I'd have to be using p orbitals in, say, the horizontal plane to get that pi bond. So these are just uh, in totally different planes, but it turns out their proximity does uh, raise the energy a little bit due to some increased electron density and stuff. Uh, and we can see this all reflected in what are called heats of hydrogenation. So heats of hydrogenation here, just the heat release that are exothermic reactions when you turn an alkene into an alkane. And for all these compounds, they've all got two sets of pi electrons, so they're all going to react with two equivalents of hydrogen with the appropriate catalyst. Uh, and in this case, in this first example, we see that it's exothermic and it's going to release 275 kilojoules. Now, the delta H here is negative 275 kilojoules, but one thing to note, when we talk about heats of hydrogenation, we usually just give you the absolute value and say the heat of hydrogenation is 275 kilojoules, and we expect you to know that a heat of hydrogenation is always exothermic. Uh, so if we look here for the isolated double bonds, the heat of hydrogenation is 250 kilojoules, and for the conjugated system, it's only 225 kilojoules. So if we kind of take a, a look at this here, they all end up at the same place. They all turn into pentane, so they're going to have a common product here, but you're going to have some different reactants here. So we got one dropping down there, we've got another that's dropping down even further, and then finally we've got one that's the most exothermic entirely. And so if we look here, so this, our negative 225 here, that's the one in black here. That's the one that's dropping down the least. And so this uh, lower heat of hydrogenation is evidence that this conjugated system is actually lower in energy. And that's, again, the focus of this chapter. And we can explain that if we kind of look at the orbitals involved in making the pi bonds. So here we might have sideways overlap of p orbitals here. So, and then for the pi bond in this location, we'll have sideways overlap of p orbitals here. Now, we usually draw these lovely lines to kind of show this sideways overlap here, but the truth is these p orbitals are just simply large enough that they naturally overlap. And so if they're naturally overlapping here and here, then they would naturally overlap here as well. And that's why they're connected systems. We can't just view them as two totally separate systems of pi electrons. Uh, and that's what we mean by conjugation. This ends up uh, leading to delocalization of the electrons over a much greater area, which lowers the energy of the system. So that's kind of how we explain that lower energy. And we'll go into more detail that later, but that's the big deal here. If you've got a single sigma bond in between two pi systems, they're going to be conjugated and lower energy more stable. Now, heats of hydrogenation, this is a topic that's come up before with both alkenes and alkynes. Uh, and the first thing you should know in predicting these relative things are some things we've already learned. And so the first thing here is that the more pi bonds you're reducing, that you're hydrogenating, then the more heat you're going to release to be more exothermic. So if I were to compare these first two compounds here, I've got a pi bond here and a pi bond here. Here I've only got one. So if one of these is going to release more heat upon hydrogenation, it's the one where I'd be reducing more pi bonds. So if we look at the sec one, so with a triple bond, you've got one sigma bond there, but you've got two pi bonds, whereas here we've only got one pi bond in the alkene, and so yet again, with more pi bonds, so you're going to release more energy during hydrogenation. So that's the first rule, more pi bonds, uh, more heat released, or a greater heat of hydrogenation. So after we count the number of pi bonds that a molecule has, the next thing we're going to look at uh, is the fact that a triple bond is actually going to release more energy than two separate double bonds. So if we look at this first one here, we've got two pi bonds, but both in alkenes. And here we've got a triple bond, which has two pi bonds all on its own. But the triple bond is going to be greater than two double bonds. Turns out it's higher energy, therefore more exothermic when you hydrogenate it. So if we look at the next one here, we've got three pi bonds in this molecule, but we've also got three in this one, but again, so two of them are in one triple bond, and this triple bond is worth more than two of the double bonds, so this is going to have a higher heat of hydrogenation as well. 
All right, so now if you've got the same number of pi bonds, if there's no difference in terms of double and triple bonds, then the next thing you look for is what's relevant to this chapter, and you look at those relationships of conjugated versus isolated versus accumulated. So in the conjugated double bonds, again, are more stable and will uh, be less exothermic upon hydrogenation than the isolated, and then the accumulated are the highest energy and therefore at least more energy upon hydrogenation. So if we look at some relationships here, so these two right here have a single sigma bond in between them, so they're conjugated. These two have more than one sigma bond in between them, and so we say they are isolated. And so in this case, if I'm looking for a greater uh, heat of hydrogenation, the conjugate is more stable, so the isolated is going to be more exothermic and release more energy uh, when being reduced to the corresponding alkane. If we look at the next one here, so again, we've got one sigma bond in between the two pi bonds here, so this is conjugated lower energy. And here we've got the pi systems immediately adjacent to each other, so that's cumulated, if I can spell. So, and cumulated is higher energy, and therefore when you hydrogenate it, it's going to release more energy and being converted to the corresponding alkane. All right, if we compare the next pair here, we'll see that we've got a single sigma bond between those, so this is conjugated. We've got a single sigma bond between these two pi electrons, and so this is also a relationship that is conjugated. So that's not going to help us. So they both have two pi electrons, no difference there. Uh, there are no triple bonds to worry about, so we'll ignore that. And then they're both conjugated, so they're equal there. So then we learned some things back when you studied alkenes, and you learned that the more substitute alkene is the more stable alkene. So if we take a look here, we've got to compare you know, these two carbons and these two carbons to the sp2 carbons and the other alkenes. Now, in this case, this first double bond has two H's here and two carbons here. We'd say that it's a disubstituted alkene. So in the next one here, he's bonded to one carbon there and one carbon there and then two H's. So he's also a disubstituted alkene. So if we look at the other one here, so this one, two carbons on this one, one carbon here, that's a tri-substitute alkene. And then this one here, one carbon there, one carbon there, and two hydrogens, that's a disubstituted alkene. And so your big difference is here. That is a more substitute alkene, and a more substitute alkene is a more stable alkene, and therefore will release less energy. And so in this case, the one that is less substitute is higher energy, and it's going to release more energy when you hydrogenate it. Uh, if we go to the next one here as well, uh, once again, we've got the same number of pi bonds in each of these. So rule number one, check. So no triple bonds to worry about. Rule number two, check. Again, we've got one sigma bond involved between both pi systems, so they're both conjugated systems. So no difference there. So, and in this case, if we look at how substituted they are, so this one is disubstituted, this one is disubstituted, this one's disubstituted, this one's disubstituted, and yet there's still no difference. And so finally, you learned that trans double bonds are more stable than cis, and therefore trans double bonds release less energy. Now, this double bond and this double bond are both trans. There's no difference there. But it's this next one here, and we'll highlight this in green. This double bond here is trans. This double bond here is cis. Trans is more stable than cis, and therefore trans starts out lower energy than cis, and will be less exothermic. So the one that's going to be more exothermic here is the cis. You'll have a higher heat of hydrogenation, i.e. release more heat when you, you turn it into the corresponding alkane.